Hi there guys, welcome back to another online lecture for Organic Chemistry 2, part of the Chem Complete series. And we are continuing with NMR today. For this next portion, we are going to talk about integration. And integration, when we deal with integration, is probably the simplest part of NMR, but it is very important. So last time we talked about chemical shift, and I gave an example of ethanol and you should go check that video out if you haven't seen it or if you're not comfortable with uh, chemical shift you should go review it but let's say that we have 0 ppm down here and we have 13 here we said that somewhere probably around 1.1 I would find a signal related to the CH3 group and then coming further Downfield, remember this side is downfield, this side is upfield when we're talking about where we just placed the CH3. So probably somewhere around 4.0, and this could vary a little bit depending on what solvent you run your NMR in and things like that, would be the CH2. And then we would see a small peak, right, uh, that would be the OH associated with this compound. And so we can identify the general peaks that we would associate with each of these protons. We're talking about H NMR here. So we've got CH3, CH2, and the H on the OH. We're looking at the protons involved in this structure and where they would appear on our general NMR, right? So this would be an NMR. This would be PPM down here. And I should mention this is abundance over here, okay? So I'll abbreviate that over here. This would be our abundance that we have. And when you are taking a look at this, you will perform something, or a lot of times the computers will automatically do this, uh, but sometimes teachers will have you try to do this by hand. You're going to look at the area under the peak. So I'm drawing these as lines, but if you could zoom up on it, you would really see these signals, right? Have, they appear like this. And there's some amount of area that we find under each of the peaks. And if we integrate it, and I'm going to show the integration sign like this over each one, these integrations should come out to 3, 2, and 1. And that's because when we do integration, the integration or the area, right? So let's write that out. The area under the peak. is going to be associated with the number of H's for that signal. So if this is the signal for CH3, we should get an integration of 3. If this is the signal for CH2, we should get an integration of 2, and so on and so forth, right? So I just want to mention um, that's pretty much all there is in, in, in terms of integration. But the one thing I want to mention, for those of you that are in a lab, or you may be handed uh, an example in class where you see something like this, right? Same general premise, so I'm not going to rewrite all of this here, but 0, 13, right? And the general idea was that we had CH3 over here. We had C, uh, CH2 over here. And then we have our OH group down there. So the, the general idea is that the integration is going to come out to the proper number for each of these, so 3, 2, and 1. However, many times you're going to see that when you integrate this, and this is what naturally happens when you take an NMR, you're going to get some other random number. Okay. So for instance, let's say this comes out to 9. This is going to come out to 6 if you're integrating, and this is going to come out to 3. So what you need to do if you see numbers like this, and I mean these numbers can be all sorts of things. It could be 47 or you know 52 or anything. So what you need to do is you need to find a signal that you know what that signal correlates to. So you could say, okay, I know that this signal right here correlates to CH3. So whatever this integrates to, it's going to be the CH3 of my molecule. So if I see that it integrates to 9, I'm going to say, okay, well, I have three hydrogens present, right? And so if I divide that by three, I get that this equals three, 
and I know then, I don't even have to know what the other peaks are as long as I know one of them to standardize this. I can say, all right, then I divide this by three, that equals two. I divide this by three, that equals one. I'm back to three to two to one, okay? So for those of you that may be confused when you're looking at this and you see various numbers, like, you know, it might be 17 and 13 and 10 or something like that, when you're integrating, you just need to know the identification of one peak and normalize it relative to that peak. Then you divide through by that smallest number for all the others, and you should get the relative number of hydrogens for each one. Okay? So I know that this was pretty short, but that is integration for NMR. It's very important because it helps us to confirm that each of these signals does carry the proper number of protons that we're looking for. And you want to make sure that you're comfortable with this. So just keep in mind that if I have symmetrical sets of protons, so for instance, this CH3 and this CH3, so let's say that I have a CH here and a CH2 and a CH3, right? These guys are identical to one another. They're symmetrical. And so this would show up as one signal when I get ready to take a look at my NMR. So let's say that I come down, I find this on my NMR, there's one signal, and this will integrate to six. You should not be looking to change this in this particular case because this is representative of two CH3 groups. And that should integrate to six if I have two of them, six protons total, right? Three of them up here, three of them down here. So just keep in mind, just because you see a number that's larger than three doesn't automatically mean that you're going to go in and you're going to change it, right? So same thing, a T-butyl group, CH3, C, CH3, all three of these CH3s are identical to one another, right? And then I've got the rest of my molecule over here. If all three of these are identical to one another, I'm going to get one signal, and that signal should integrate to nine. So... Just keep that in mind. The integration, the, the key point of the integration is it tells us how many of these hydrogens we're dealing with for that given signal. And the signal may have some symmetry to it. Um, so other than that, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this helpful. I'm here for you guys as always. If you leave comments, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for taking the time to learn with me, and I will see you for the next lesson. Thanks, guys.